Welcome. This is part nine, Come Before Winter. Our topic, observe these. Our scripture reading is taken from Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even on to the end of the world. Amen. So what are the all things that Jesus commanded? Well, if you allow me for a little bit, I will get into some of them, but notice the injunction. He says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So therefore, nothing is to be left out when it comes to you, dear listener, getting the understanding of what the gospel expects of you. And oftentimes when you hear that, it sounds obligatory. It sounds demanding. It sounds, well, let's just be frank, like a chore. But say, for instance, you're going on a job interview. You want to know what is expected of you. You want to make sure that you're prepared. And so, too, in the kingdom of God, we can't just dismiss terminology and just cast it aside into the wastebasket of, oh, that's not for me. And so when we are called to observe all things, Notice what and where that begins with the eyes, the physical eyes, and of course the spiritual eyes, discernment, understanding. And so the very first thing that the servant of God ought to do is to make sure that those who are prospective candidates for baptism and afterwards understand both intellectually and experientially those things that are commanded, as Jesus said. So, a few of those important observations are here recorded. Number one, the ordinance of humility and the Lord's Supper. In John chapter 13, after washing the disciples' feet, Jesus turned to them and said, What I have done unto you, make sure that you do to one another. So, in conjunction with the Lord's Supper, the ordinance of humility or foot washing ought to be observed. And that every single time, friends, they go hand in hand. Additionally, brotherly love. See, that's not a chore. In John 13 and 34 and 35, carrying on his last discourse, Jesus said to the disciples, A new commandment I give unto you, love one another as I have loved you. And so therefore, brotherly love is one of those commandments that we have. Most important thing that we need each other to understand. Because if the church of God is to run smoothly, then brotherly love has to be paramount. Additionally, the child of God must understand the importance of a prayer life. So important is this that in the Sermon on the Mount and later on, Jesus emphasized the importance of prayer. And prayer was one of those things that he emphasized a lot. In fact, again, like I said, with the physical eyes, the disciples observed him much in prayer. And that's one of the reasons why they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And so the prayer life of the believer is paramount. Additionally, as the first part of the Beatitudes or the Sermon on the Mount begins, blessed are there. And a lot of it has to do with contentment. Blessed are you in this position. Blessed are you in that position. Be content where you are. And the Apostle Paul would go on to say, Godliness with contentment is great gain. You want true riches? Be content with the things of God. And finally, not judging, but discipling. A lot of times we are so quick to criticize and condemn, and that does not exclude you. So much so, because you see those in 
leadership positions, those who are the big ones in the church, as it were, and you see how they act, and you want to act like them, and therefore, you get into the habit of judging others. The call is not to judging, but to discipleship. Not to criticize and condemn, but to build up, to lift up, and to help going forward. So friends, as we see to draw to a close, there are many things that there are in the Gospels and in the New Testament that we see that is expected of the believer. But Jesus would boil all that down to two simple precepts. Love God and love one another. If we have these things covered, we have very much observed very well. Friends, as we observe these things, we cannot go wrong. And again, friends, like I said, the important thing is that we observe whatsoever the Lord commands. There are certain things, like I said, that are in dispute, but this one is not. Love God, love one another. So our question for reflection is this. What is one Bible doctrine that you have problems with and why? Again, the question is, what is one Bible doctrine you have problems with and why? Our scripture for our next study, part 10, is Mark chapter 4, verses 26 to 29. Mark chapter 4, 26 to 29. Friends, you don't want to miss the next couple of presentations. Be sure that you catch those. God bless.